stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. Last week, we discussed a few stretches that would help us prevent constipation. And before that, the two weeks before that, we stretched out to help us prevent arthritis and asthma. Today, we're gonna talk about how we can help ourselves prevent diabetes, perhaps prevent delay, and sometimes altogether avoid it. But before we do that, we need to understand what is diabetes. Diabetes is simply a metabolic disorder. It affects our eyes, kidneys, our heart. It could be caused by any number of reasons. Stress, cholesterol, rich foods. Some of the symptoms for diabetes include excessive hunger and thirst, frequent urination, slow healing, and blurred vision. We need to understand why diabetes occurs before we can help ourselves prevent those symptoms. If you recall your biology classes in school, we have an organ called the liver which produces bile. When the body has needs to form, uh, forms glucose, bile actually helps convert that glucose to energy. But let's say we have too much glucose in our body, too many sugary foods, too much stress, increases the level of glucose. The body needs to eject the excessive glucose. And that's when we need the help of the pancreas. Pancreas is a little feathery organ next to the liver, which forms insulin, and insulin helps eject the glucose from the body. Josiane. To my extreme right, Josiane Hurd. Let me introduce our wonderful friends here, Josiane, Deirdre, Wana. To my left, Judy Jacob. All of you have met Judy, and you've met Lucy as well, Lucy Benjamin. Josiane and I were having a chat before the episode started, before we started filming today, and she had some interesting points about diabetes and some of the dietary foods. Josiane, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? How can we help? prevent well, that with food. I, I was taking silymarin, which is a milk, milk thistle. Uh -huh. milk, milk thistle is a natural um, herbs, which is very uh, good to heal the liver. Right. And it's totally natural. And natural. there's other herbs as well, but it's one of them that I know and I take every day to, as a preventative. Right. Okay, That's great. basically what I do with, with that one. She's talking to With her. the information that Josiane has just shared with us, would you spell that? What was it? Milk thistle. Milk thistle. Or silymarin. Silymarin. Yes. Well, you can include diets that are good to help prevent diabetes along with the stretches. Don't give up on your stretches, but get as much support as you can from the outside. Lucy, you mentioned something else as well before we started this episode. We were talking about how your mother used to give you foods without sugar. Yes, long before, my father was diabetic and uh, she herself uh, had made her own ideas that that was the ins the pancreas was weak and the insulin produced was not there so therefore she used to uh, give us foods without any sugar she used to uh, she knew that uh, rice contained sugar potatoes contained sugar Start. any starchy yeah. foods were right. sugar based and so she limited and uh, and actually controlled our portions because she didn't think that it was necessary to over eat any amount, but she measured them. So we did have the necessary sugar for energy, as she said. 
but it was not something excessive. It's not exactly. And you there just, were six of us, and none of us developed the diabetes. I think she was right somehow, <laughs> because I, she it is hereditary to some extent. Too. Right. Right. So, but she was on the spot about that. Anything yeah. in excess yeah. can be bad for the body. But yes, the body needs some sugar. Mm -hmm. Judy and Deirdre will share their experiences with regard to diabetes a little later in the show. We want our audience to understand as well, we all of us want to share with you that diabetes affects the midriff part of your body. What you want to do is make sure that your midriff mm -hmm. is massaged and exercised as much as possible, which involves forward folds. So what you want to do is massage the liver and the pancreas enough to optimize their function. So a lot of forward folds, you also want to improve your thyroid function. So let's try a few stretches from our diabetes sequence. Uh, we don't have the cover of the book, but this is, we are going to go into our diabetes card right there. Yoga Secrets has a card that shows 20 stretches that are helpful in preventing diabetes. So let's all stand up. We'll start with some of the standing forward folds. Posture number two on your postcard, if you have them with you. How does the knee feel, everybody? <laughs> have you been practicing your arthritis sequence? Posture number two is Padahasta. Pada, as you learned, was foot. In Latin, it has, the ped is the root word, hasta is hand. It's just hands to feet. So we're gonna take our arms all the way overhead, fold from the hip, and when we say hip, the back part is what we're saying, we're referring to as hip, but from the front, it's the midriff. So that's what you're doing. You're collapsing your midriff. Inhale, let's stagger out a little bit. Deirdre, would you, do you want to come back or forward? Let me go back. Maybe you can come forward. Yes, we stagger a little so our arms don't, you know, don't have to hit each other. <laughs> Inhale. As you take your arms up to shoulder height, keep your palms facing forward. When you go above shoulder height, turn your palms to face each other. Keep inhaling. All the way over your head, palms face each other. Now, we are going to fold forward from the hip, keep your back straight, not stiff. Keep your knees straight, again, not stiff. Fold, as you fold, exhale. Keep your back straight, keep exhaling. Try to exhale loud, go all the way. Try to get to your toes. If you don't reach your toes, that's fine. Get to your ankles. You're not quite there at your ankles, go to your calves. Just make sure there is a connection between your lower abdomen and the top of your thigh. You want to massage your internal organs, especially activate the pancreas and the liver. You can feel a beautiful hamstring stretch. This posture is also great for sciatica, but we will go into that later. As you come up, keep your hands in front of you and inhale, keep your back straight. Come up, palms facing each other. And as your palms, hands come down the side, turn your palms sideways, exhale. Palms by the side of your body. Relax. We're gonna have each one of our participants demonstrate one of these postures, and then we will have Judy and Deirdre share any experiences they may have had, either with diabetes, maybe someone in the family has it, or you know a friend who does, and we can share that. Who would like to go with the first demo? Josie Ann, you haven't been with us in a while. Would you like to do the first demo? Oh, <laughs> you're going to be selective. Okay, depending on the... You choose. Choose from that sequence. What would you like to do? Give us a nice, intense stretch. We'll have time for eight postures. So we're going to do two each. Okay. The Show. mountain? The Which one? The mountain. Mountain? Okay, let's go with the mountain. That's actually a great posture for diabetes but because it da actually doesn't really compress your organs as much. In fact, leaves the pancreas nice and loose. Okay, that's posture number 17. Parvat, Parvat means mountain in Sanskrit. And Josiane is going to come to the front, to the demo mat. I'm going to come to Josiane's side. This, the technique is almost the way we started the um, Padahasta, the way we began. So let's take our arms up overhead. Inhale, go slowly. Take your time. Now we're going to fold forward, and when you come Closer to your toes, you're going to start walking your toes back, but place your palms on the mat. I'm going to come on Josiane's mat. That's good, Josiane. Now slowly take your feet back, a little at a time. Good. 
Now, just when you're feeling a bit of a stretch in your hamstrings, you can start moving your hands forward just a little bit, not too much. That's good. Now, stay in that posture, please. Keep exhaling as long as you're comfortable. Now, here's the trick. Nice, Lucy, that's great. Deirdre, try to get your heels down. If, you're, if your hamstrings hurt, then what we can do is maybe place on. I want you to make the connection. Okay, there, keep your feet on that. Judy, if you need a break, Put that. You want to make that connection? In yoga, you never try to suspend yourself in midair. Always make a connection. Good. Hold. Nice. Now, when you want to come up from this posture, it's not going to be easy. So what we're going to do, you have your hands all the way down. You want to bring your feet closer to your hands before you come up. So walk your feet closer to your hands. And when you can't walk any closer, then you slowly get up on your fingertips. Bring your fingers close to your feet. Slowly roll your back up. Keep inhaling as you come up. Inhale, hands by your side. Thank you, Josiane. I stepped on your mat, made a nice impression there. <laughs> Who would like to be the second demo person? Hello. Judy? Fine. Okay. okay, Judy, you have to choose your posture before we get oh, into okay. it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's see. Try to choose something we haven't done before. I think we may have covered most of these. Do you want to try the uh, Paschimottana or Janasesha, the 26? This one? Yeah, either one leg or two. This one means you stay there twice as long. This one means... Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe that. Two sides. Okay. 26? 26? Yeah, head to knee, Janasesha. Okay, shall I start? Please, yeah. Let's get in seated position, all of us. Let's do it with Judy. Extend your legs in front of you. Keep your soles up. So basically, you're flexing your feet. What, you, what, you're trying, what we're trying to do is we will bend one knee. What we're trying to do is reach our toes with the under part of our belly. So we're going to try and get there. It doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is to get your hand over the extended foot. Fold your left heel, tuck it into your right inner thigh. Make sure that your right leg is extended straight. So if that means that you have to turn your knee back, but bring your body forward, so that's nice. Let me see, good, great. Now you are facing the audience right here. Flex your feet. Inhale, I'm gonna stagger a little bit, go back. Inhale, take your arms up from the side. Keep inhaling up to shoulder height. Remember, when you come overhead, palms face together. You're gonna fold from the hip, and as you fold, exhale. When you exhale, you're actually expelling all the air, so that helps you fold forward a little more. Keep exhaling. In yoga, we believe exhale is more important than inhaling. Inhale happens. Inhale, come up, but sometimes we're gonna do it consciously. Inhale, come up, hands over your head. Exhale, bring your arms down by your side. Very gently, use your hands, change legs. Take the right heel, tuck it into your left groin. Now I want to just demonstrate on Judy and show you how you should keep your body. We will, in one of the future episodes, we will learn the names of the different muscles. But for now, the back part behind your neck is called the trapezius. And you want to make sure the trapezius, the latissimus, which is just behind the shoulders, and your lower back, they're all in one straight line. Now they should be straight and relaxed. Not tense, but just straight. Inhale, and Judy, you've got your feet flexed. Nice, keep your knees straight. Good. Are you comfortable there, Judy? Mm, I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height. Palms down for the moment. Once you go past the shoulder, palms face each other. Inhale, you can look up, because it'll help you stretch your body, the upper torso. Upper body and torso, okay. And then you exhale, fold from the hip. Keep exhaling, go down. Exhale, great. Try to wrap your fingers over your feet. Very nice. Lucy, Josiane, that's great. Deirdre, keep exhaling. Doing great. Hold that posture as long as you can. As long as you're not in pain, you're fine. You're doing great. I'm going to put this brick here so you have a connection. That's great. How do you feel? Great. Good. You guys are all very tall, so you need, you know, maybe you need a little belt or something. That's very nice. Inhale, come up. Bring your arms by your side. And keep exhaling. Overhead, keep exhaling. Bring your palms down. 
relax. We did do both sides. Thank you, Judy. Okay, who is our next victim? Lucy. Okay. <laughs> Pick your favorite one. Um, well, I like, is this the one? I like 24. Question number 24, okay. Yeah. We are the Matsyendra. That's actually an excellent posture that you've chosen. It gives a wonderful spinal twist. Massages not just the uh, mid organs in the midriff, it massages a lot. It also ex uh, stretches your obliques a lot. The obliques are the muscles on the side of our body, so that's great. Are the Matsyendra. Matsyendra is the name of a sage. Matsya means fish, and I don't know, I don't think the sage ever had fish, but it was named after him. Arda is half. So it's half Matsyendra posture. We're not into the full twist, it's a half twist. Now you could keep your leg extended. I like to keep, I, I don't extend my leg all the way because for me it's a bit too intense, but those of you are comfortable, in fact they say that's a beginner stretch, but I think I'm not quite there. So I'm gonna fold, let's try with the folded uh, part. Your right groin, your uh, right heel tucked into the inner left thigh you take your left leg, you uh, actually hold with your hands. Take your left leg, cross over your right knee. Now when your leg, left leg is crossed over the right knee, that's good, very nice. Now if you can't place your foot on the ground, that's great. And if you do place it down, make sure both your big toes are facing forward. Now because your left leg is over, your right elbow is going to go over your left leg. So you're gonna get a nice twist. Let's place our left hand behind us in preparation so we don't fall back. Inhale, take your right arm overhead. Keep inhaling. Exhale, turn to your left. Bring your right elbow over your left knee. Now, if you're comfortable, I want you to also try and help yourself push your left knee further. If you're comfortable, you can try and touch your right and as you go further and further back, try to turn to the left. Hold. I'm going to come out of this. I just want to make sure everyone's comfortable. If anyone feels it's a little intense, feel actually you guys are great with your four legs folded. You don't want it stretched. I don't know why they call it beginners. You guys are not beginners. This is great. Inhale. Bring your right arm up. Inhale. Turn your body back. Nice. Exhale. Now, very carefully, place the right hand behind you. We're going to do the other leg now. Cross. Now, take the right. Which one did we do? This left one. Okay. Take the left heel, tuck it into the right inner thigh. Take your right leg. Physically, hold your leg. Take it right over your left knee. And you are going to face your two big toes forward, which means your soles will be facing outward. Take your right hand if it's already behind you, which is great. Try as you feel, uh, if you want to feel the stretch more, you want to make sure the palm is right behind your butt. Now if you feel it's too intense, you can take it further back. I would recommend try and steal your hand closer and closer to your butt. Now inhale, raise the left hand. Inhale. Now turn your right shoulder to the right, face right. Exhale and bring your right left elbow over your right knee and push your right knee. Push your right knee back and this time we can still go and touch our left toe and if it doesn't quite reach, doesn't quite, if your hand doesn't quite get there, that's fine, you can help yourself. Turn to the right and see if you can look back. You should feel a nice twist in your obliques. Release, release your hand first, your left hand first, then your right hand, inhale, raise your left arm, exhale, bring your left arm down, stretch out both your legs, get the blood moving. This is also a great posture to help prevent arthritis of the knees because as we discussed earlier, what we're doing is we are bending and unbending the knees which helps the synovial fluid form faster and that gives us the lubrication. Right. Who is who would like to go next? Who has not been on the mat? <laughs> Deirdre. Oh, okay. We'll 
see how we go for time. I think we may be able to do. Have you chosen a posture yet? Um, no. <laughs> you don't have to do standing or seated. You could do prone and supine. You want to try this one? That's a fun posture. I'll try it. You're going to be calling me names, but <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll love it. When you're done, you'll love it. OK, Deirdre has, has been helped to choose <laughs> posture number 35, which is called Ashtanga Namaskara. Ashta is eight, Anga is limbs. And it simply means that eight body parts are touching the ground. Let's come down in prone position so you can lie down, lie flat on your mat. Oh, I might as well explain to you, while you're lying down, I'll explain to you which are the eight body parts. In this position, the eight body parts would be the chin, which would touch the ground, the chin, the chest. Oh, actually, let's get into it before we actually did that. Judy, am I in your way? No, that's fine. Actually, let me come on the other side, dear. Okay, it's gonna be a little tricky because this posture, when you enter into it as a posture by itself, is a different technique. When you enter into it as part of a sequence, it's different, as part of the sun salutation, it's different. What you wanna do is place your palms right under your shoulders. You will already see which are the eight body parts. Your chin touches the ground, your chest, your palms, your knees, and the back of your ankles. Is that eight? Yes, okay. Now, very slowly, you're gonna try and peel your hip off the floor, which involves gliding your knees closer to your chest. Now, keep coming up, just glide, so you can tuck your toes under, keep gliding forward. I'm gonna come and help some of you. Let me see how far we can go and hold it. I, it's gonna be hard for me to talk as I do that, but good, yes, good. Your belly should be off the ground. You want to touch your chest to the ground, lift your hip a little more. That's it, nice. Keep your chin, this is a tough posture to hold. You guys are doing great, lovely, Judy. Lovely. Now, you might as well come out of it gracefully. Come into the cobra posture from there. Let's just come out of it gracefully. Come out when you say cobra, lift your head. Inhale, and then take your butt back. You can either sit on your heel or just relax. Take a deep breath. Now, what happens when you're coming down in this posture, when you raise your hip, what's happening is you're giving some room for the pancreas to start floating inside of you. Just visualize it as a little leaf that's flying around mm -hmm. <laughs> in the autumn breeze. That's what's happening. So you're not exactly compressing the pancreas this time, but you are activating it. Thank you, Deirdre. Judy, would you like to share with us any experiences of people in your family who might have had diabetes or someone who's had a problem with slow healing? Oh. Well, the only thing is that I've found in my family is it's associated with the aging. Right. They never had it when they were young, but as they age, they seem to have this tendency. And I was curious about it, what, how you can prevent it from happening. Right. That was one question. And then the second question was um, the sugar. That's right. in like fruits and vegetables. Is it a good sugar? Is it a... Not a good sugar. Lucy had made a very good point, and I, I totally agree with her. As long as the sugars are natural sugars, they're easier to break down. I'm not going to go into the medical aspects of it. We are not doctors here, right. but you made a good point. It's easier to break natural sugars. But even so, if you're going to have, say, a very ripe mango, it's got a lot of sugar. So you don't want to have three or four mangoes because maybe it's easier to break it down, but if you have three or four at a time, right. then instead of taking four times as much in... Uh, an unnatural sugar quantity, you're still taking probably twice as much. So you want to be careful. So anything in excess is always bad. But you're right. I mean, the sugars could impact us. And also, we find when we have stressful jobs, I'm <laughs> sure all of us have experienced that. When you have a stressful job, sometimes, and in fact, there was a commercial too, sometimes you don't even know why you're eating. We just eat because you want, you know, you just want to have some something in the mouth you want to have That's you keep drinking tea and drink. calms you, down. It, yes. you think it calms you down <laughs> actually it's probably causing us stress because mm -hmm. when you have coffee I've read you know, for every cup of coffee because it dehydrates you for every cup of coffee we should have two glasses of water mm -hmm. I don't know I've not done that experiment but it makes sense because now since I read that I'm starting to feel thirsty every time I have coffee <laughs> so yeah it you have to be very well, careful coffee is a natural diuretic 
but you want to watch out that you don't really go ahead. Well, it depends on how we have a coffee, too. If you have coffee the way we have it, we take it with a lot of milk, um, maybe it's not going to help. Yeah. But if you have it black, probably it does. Some of us, some okay. people take yeah. a lot of sugar in the coffee, so there you go. There's yeah, right. extra <laughs> sugar. Probably. So if you just have black coffee, apparently it's good for us, so that's mm -hmm. fine. You know what? We're not going to speak for the coffee companies, but I see your point. I see your point. So and what about the artificial sugars? I mean, I... I, again, I read a little bit about right. it, and I don't want to dwell too much, but I've read that if the artificial sugars, when you take a lot of those, it could lead to cancer, but then we are going into a, an mm -hmm. arena that we are not, I'm not familiar with. There's one called um, stevia, which is made naturally, natural... Uh, okay. Which one? Everything is natural. Stevia. stevia. You can buy it in a health food store. Ah, like an herbal sugar? Kind yes, of herbal sugar, yes. There you go. I think we yeah. should exchange yeah. notes now. <laughs> and it's you not synthetic. It's just all natural. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. So, and if you don't like your coffee without sugar, then maybe that's what mm -hmm. you should do. Otherwise, get used to what I did. I got used to coffee without sugar. Right. But I you still drop it, and then after a while, you can't taste, you don't like the sugar anymore. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it. in India, we have very sugary coffee. So now when I go there, mm -hmm. I don't even take coffee because mm -hmm. I can't drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Deirdre, I think you or your mom said they might be coming to my son's wedding, so you're going to get very sweet coffee. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you okay with sweet coffee? I don't drink coffee, actually. Oh, okay. Good yeah. job. Well done. <laughs> All the coffee companies are going to come after us. Have, do you know anyone who might have a problem with diabetes, high sugar levels? Mm, no, I don't. But you do know a lot of people who have stressful jobs. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. You can ask them to join us okay. next time. Have them practice our sequence. Do we have time for one more posture each? How much time do we have? No. Okay. What we are going to do, each one of us is going to pick a posture and go into our favorite posture from the sequence. My, the rest of my team, my partners are going to do that while I'm going to close the sequence with a suggestion that if you would like a copy of this set of cards, email us or go to my website, www.yogaexpress.com. That's Yoga Express without the E before the X. Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S, -S, or visit my blog. Again, that's yogaexpress.blogspot.com. Let me see which is my favorite posture here. I'm going to try and go into this one. I like the plow. Oh, I have a mic here, okay? 